In my experience, most people who do warm glass at some point try putting window glass or container glass into the kiln to see what happens. The results are mostly disappointing. Using crushed glass in particular, what's called divit or divitrification, can make things pretty ugly. About a million years ago, I managed a project for an agency where we went around Seattle and ran tests with hot glass casting and blowing artists to determine whether crushed plate glass was a viable hot glass medium. If you're interested, here's the report. I noticed that in every instance, the hot glass people added soda ash to the recycled glass batch to get a workable molten batch. There's about 16% sodium oxide in soda line glass as it is, so why add more? The glass guys told me that sodium burns off on every melting and needs to be added back or the batch is too stiff. In another project, Hanson Fong, a postdoc in the Material Science Department at the University of Washington, took some electron microscope images of divided glass tiles. This image doesn't reproduce well, but Hanson thought he saw two separate effects. The horizontal arrow is pointing at a pit, where a volatile molecule got excited and exited the surface. He also saw needles pointed to with the angled arrow that represented crystal growth on the surface. Looking at a number of photos, Hansen and I felt that more of the appearance of divit came from the pits than from the crystals. This idea that sodium is lost and needs to be replaced led me to develop the Egyptian paste type glass tiles in a video that I already made for borosilicate glass and will present in another video for soda lime glass. It also led me to make this test. This is a sample board where I fuse two by two tiles at temperatures from 1500 to 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. Top to bottom, they're green container, plate, amber container, and clear container. At low temperatures, you can see that you don't get too much divot, but you also don't get complete slumping into the mold. As the temperatures get higher, the divot gets worse until at 1850 and then 1900 degrees, the glass goes into a full melt. I think the amber and plate glass are the best examples. The amber starts out finer and divots really badly until you get to 1850 and 1900 degrees when it completely melts. The plate glass starts out coarser. The circles behind the plate are dabs of silicon caulk I used to attach the samples, but you can see at 1900 it also goes into a full melt. Now check this out. I took pretty coarse glass and kind of humped it up in the center of the mold. Then I fired the mold to 1832 holding for 10 minutes. No divot, no sticking. By humping up the glass, I forced the glass to be really soft before it flowed out to fill the mold instead of leaving sharp little pieces sticking to the sides, which I'm sure you've seen before. And by using the right mold release, I was able to get clean release. So maybe by doing what I call high temperature fusing, we can turn regular old plate glass into viable raw material without having to add any fluxes which cause their own set of problems. I'll be doing another video on what I think that right mold release is.